Hello chess fans, today we're going to analyze my classical game against an IM in the Maritime Chess Festival. So this was actually against the same IM that I had played in the Rapid Tournament. And so I was hoping to get a win here like I did in the Rapid Tournament, but okay. My opponent decided to go for e4, I went for e5, I went. my opponent went for knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5. So we see the Rui Lopez. And uh, in a previous game here I went a6, attacking the bishop, the bishop went back to a4, and I went knight e7. And the idea was simply, okay, if he takes now, I can take back with the knight, defending here. And I actually ended up drawing that game against a much lower rated opponent. And I honestly didn't even get any chances to win that game. So I actually didn't want to repeat this. So here I decided to go for something else that was quite ambitious, which is b5, bishop b3, and knight a5. The idea is simply just to go after the bishop. And typically you shouldn't move your pieces twice in the opening. So this seems like sort of a bad idea. But here white's setup is not really poised to punish me in the best way. Now, if you're wondering why you can't take here, it's because after takes takes, I have, oh, not queen f6, uh, queen uh, g5, or even queen e7 should also probably work. So he can't really take there, so he decided to castle. I went for d6, now I'm defending my pawn. And here there's an important trick to note. For example, uh, if d4 takes takes, if I go c5, attacking the knight, then he'll go bishop d5, attacking my rook. The idea is if he moved his knight, then he'd get his bishop trapped, and... Um, for example, after I played bishop b7, which is what I did in the game, this move knight c3 would be a blunder because of c5 here, and now the bishop would be getting trapped. And notice if bishop d5 now, I can just I can just take it. Or I could just leave it there. I could just take here because my knight's doing a good job defending this. So that's sort of the idea. The idea of this opening is sort of to use the Noah's arc trap. So here, white probably has to do something to address the bishop. There's a few ways to do that. For example, you can go c3, you can go c4, you can go a3, a4. Uh, but you, most of these moves you probably don't want to do because I would probably take here. Or you can make a counterattack with going this move bishop d2. It's also popular. Or knight f5. Or yeah, there's a lot of different moves here. Here my opponent decided to go for the most popular move c4. And I'm very embarrassed to say that I actually just didn't know what to do here. I completely forgot what I was supposed to do. And during the game I did remember that somehow I'm supposed to go c5 and g6 after the knight goes to f5 and then the knight goes to e3, then I'm supposed to get a bishop on the long diagonal. And I remembered something like this, but I couldn't remember what order to do it in. And I think I pretty much blitzed this move knight takes b3, which is just a horrible move. Uh, for instance, if anyone's wondering why you can't take here, it's because bishop takes, takes, and then queen a4. And then here, this would be a nice position for uh, white. Notice there's this fork. So I shouldn't take. But really what I should have done here is go c5, knight f5, now g6. Attacking the knight, knight e3, and then bishop g7. So exactly what I thought I was supposed to do. But during the game, I was like, okay, am I supposed to take here first? I remember I'm supposed to take here. And then I thought he'd go a takes, in which case c5 here, something like this would lead to this exact same position, except I just inserted this. But then he played queen takes, and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> That's why you're supposed to do it this way. For example, if I did it this way, now bishop g7, here he would commit to knight c3, and then after knight takes b3, for example, if he went queen takes b3, okay, I could immediately go b4, and this queen's just not doing a lot on b3. Okay, but instead now he goes queen b3, and now I have a lot of pressure on my position. I went c5, knight f5, now I went g6, and now he had this move knight g3. Again, this was kind of surprising. I actually expected him to go knight e3, even though it looks like it hangs the pawn. Knight g3 is also uh, a good move, though. Now here I went for b4, I have to sort of defend this pawn, there's no other way to do it. I move like queen d7, I think it's just bad. I'm not entirely sure why queen d7 is so bad, actually. Yeah, okay, maybe he just takes takes and goes knight c3, knight d5. But yeah, queen, maybe queen d7 is not the worst move in the world, but okay, b4 is much more natural because now I'm sort of uh, discouraging knight c3. Now here you can actually play knight c3 because his idea is to go knight c5, and if I, and if I take my bishop hangs. So maybe he could have gone knight c3 here, and it's one of the best moves, but he went rook d1, and now I go queen d7. So at that point, he was threatening some sort of e5 ideas, and he was also threatening knight c3 uh, to attack my bishop, but now I sort of prevented both those type of ideas. He went a3, a5, bishop f4, very natural, keeping pressure on this pawn. Here I went knight f6, a takes, and yeah, here I made, okay, yeah, I maybe shouldn't have gone over that so quickly. You actually really have to make a decision here, and I end up making the sort of the wrong decision, now, I on it, I'm not honestly sure why I didn't go for this. Takes, takes. I'm trying to remember. No, no. Uh, yeah, I think... Hmm, wait. Takes, takes. There was something I was afraid of here. Okay, maybe... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I was afraid of queen d3. And I actually just didn't see how I was supposed to defend this pawn. But apparently here, I'm just supposed to sacrifice the pawn. Because at the end of the line... 
I am winning this pawn on e4, which is what I just missed. So, yeah, instead of that, I went for c takes. The idea being now if queen d3, I could go bishop e7 and... At this point, I thought I had knight d7. Yeah, I didn't. I just didn't even see that my pawn was hanging the whole time. Knight d7, and I thought I'd go a4, knight c5, and I really like my position. And actually, here the engine gives me its blessing because it actually says that my move is better than taking the pawn, which was knight d7. I just completely forgot I could take this pawn, to be honest. But okay, he doesn't have to go queen b3. Here, the move I expected was this move knight d2, in which case, okay, I thought that I would get a reasonable position here. My knight can come to these d7 and c5 scores. I thought here I was actually slightly better. But he ended up playing this brilliant move c5, which, okay, after, so when I played c takes d before, I didn't see. But while he was thinking, he thought here, I think 15 minutes, I saw c5 and I was like, oh, wow, this is a very, very powerful move. I hope my opponent doesn't play it. And okay, he played it. And uh, I was actually a little bit happy because, okay, playing a move c5, while I thought it was the best move, and I thought it was a very, very nice move for my opponent. My opponent was, did a really good job to find this move. I thought it was a very, very good move, but I also thought it gives me a lot of chances. Like, the game gets really, really wild. Now, apparently, according to the engine, it doesn't even get really, really wired, wild. After queen takes e5, he has this move rook c1, which actually just wins the game on the spot. Now, if queen b6, then he goes queen a4, and I can't block the check with anything. If I go knight d7, for example, what's the quickest way to win here? Just knight d2, knight c4. And then king e7, obviously, is just horrible. So... Here, what I thought during the game is I would go queen b5 and I should be fine. This is what I stopped calculating. But here, apparently, after knight a3, he's winning. Now, if knight c3, I just go queen b, queen d7 and I'm completely fine. But knight a3, now if I go queen d7, he has knight c4, threatening knight b6. And also threatening this pawn, and I really have nothing to do. For example, at the moment, I think he might be threatening takes, takes, and then rook d1. And then I already I lose after something like e5 even. So, yeah, here I would just be completely lost. I think it's like plus four or something. And so after rook c1, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to go here, check, and then king e7. I'm supposed to go for this king e7 line, which is just, okay, no one's going to do that. <laughs> the other thing I expected was knight d2. And here I thought I was doing uh, fine. Now, if I go here, I'm up a tempo, and I didn't have to move my queen from b5. So instead, my opponent decided to go for knight c3 here, which was a move actually I didn't even see whatsoever. I didn't even begin to calculate this move. So again, I was very shocked. And... Uh, especially when you don't even see your opponent's next move, it sort of gets to your head because you sort of think, oh, I must be playing bad because I, I didn't even see that move. And here I was thinking between bishop e7 and knight g4. And uh, I ended up deciding not to go for bishop e7 because of this sort of line. And I thought after rook c7, I'm just losing. Now I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, here apparently I'm supposed to go b takes, which is a move that I would have never played. After queen takes b7, I'm supposed to go queen c8. And apparently here I'm doing sort of well after this, this, and I'm castling next move. But I didn't see any of that. I didn't even consider this type of move. So instead I went for knight g4, which is actually the best move. And I think uh, my opponent thought this was a mistake after the game, like this knight g4 move, because, okay, I'm, I think my opponent said that I should have kept this to uh, control this. But okay, it turns out that knight g4 is a good move. Maybe, though, I probably, I didn't really calculate the line fully. Okay, so I, my opponent went knight h1, which is a move I was really surprised by. Here after the game... Uh, I thought he was just going to go rook d2. Like, I thought rook d2 was a one-second move. Then he started thinking for, like, five minutes, and then he played knight h1. I was like, okay, I didn't even see that move. But, okay, uh, rook d2, apparently my opponent said after takes, 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 check, king e7, that they thought they were losing or something, or they thought the position was equal. I can't remember exactly what they said, to be honest. But apparently here, it's just supposed to be a draw after a perpetual, which, okay, is pretty lame, but... Okay, anyways, my opponent doesn't want a perpetual, so they went for a more ambitious move, which is knight h1, which actually gives me the advantage now. Uh, but yeah, it's still just incredibly unclear. Here, I really need to go for this move, <coughs> knight e5. And uh, I was worried about this move, knight d5 on knight e5, but now here I should go bishop g7. And apparently, I have takes, attacking the queen, so he can't take mine. And then after rook takes, I have a4 is what I had to see to prevent the queen from coming in from check. For example, here the move that I was thinking about was this move, <coughs> queen a7. Okay, actually, this is even, queen a7 is even fine. But yeah, I guess I just completely miscalculated this. I thought I, I thought I was losing. But yeah, knight e5 would have given me a nice advantage. Uh, for example, a4, queen d1, and now here, queen b7, and I castle next, and his knight's horrible. 
<coughs> my bishop's a monster and I have passed pawns. And yeah, here I honestly, I would have probably been pretty close to winning, but okay, that's a very difficult line to spot. So I think I went for the more human move, which was bishop e7, just looking to get castled. Here he went knight e5, I took took. And yeah, here's my last chance to sort of keep in the game. Here I really had to go for this move, queen c6. What I saw is takes, 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 and I didn't see what I was doing here. But again, I just had some sort of blind spot for this pawn on e4. Like, I just could not see the pawn was hanging ever. And better yet, the pawn also, the queen also defends this. So maybe I thought he had here and then he was preventing the mate. But okay, that, that just hangs the queen in one move. So yeah, I'm not really sure what I was thinking here. His, apparently his best line here is to go h3, something like this. And then again, I take here and the position is uh, completely zeros. But okay, so it was a joy of chess. I didn't see that. Now here I thought if he takes, 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 and takes, then I have rook a1 with mate. And so he'd have to play a move like uh, g3. Apparently here he can go knight g3, knight f1, but I thought he would play g3 in the game. Then for example here, castles, I thought after queen takes before. I thought here I was slightly better, because or maybe it's equal, because I thought this b-pawn would probably become a weakness. I'd probably win the b-pawn at some point, and... Uh, I thought maybe that I was slightly better, but I guess I guess not. The engine likes white a little bit. Okay, but queen a4 was played here, and now he took here. And after takes, 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 castles, queen takes before, we get into a position that... Okay, I very much recommend that you guys try to analyze this for yourself, or just take a few minutes, like take f two, three minutes, one minute maybe even, to just analyze what do you think the evaluation of this position is, and... Like, why do you think it's that evaluation? So when evaluating a position like this, like, of course, the first thing we look at is material and white is up a healthy pawn here. Next thing we might look at is the pawn structure and okay, white pawn structure is better. This pawn D6 is backwards. But the most important thing to look at is piece activity. And notice black has pretty much all their pieces active while this knight on H1 needs at least three moves to start doing something or at least two moves to start doing something. So as black here it is imperative absolutely imperative that you maintain your initiative and that is something that during the game i did not do at this point in the game i actually just gave up which i didn't resign but i mentally just checked out and i started looking at other games started not calculating anything and just started playing very days because honestly at this point in the tournament like i realized okay i no longer have a chance like i'm just gonna have to try to hold this position i think i'm losing anyways and uh, at this point in the tournament, I, I also had an assignment due in four hours. So I was like, okay, maybe maybe I can still do the assignment if he if he uh, beats me quickly. Uh, side note, I got a 50 on that assignment. But okay, anyways, uh, yeah, I just checked out. Now here, what you have to do is place move 95. The idea being now, if rook d1 attacking my pawn, then I have queen g4 and it's game over with this fork. And so... He can't go there, so let's say he goes knight here. Then I can go knight d. Oh, sorry. Uh, shoot, let me get back to the position we were at. Okay, yeah, I went queen e6, or I went rook c8, which is a terrible move. I have to go knight e5, and then after knight g3, I have knight d3, queen d2. I can just take it, or do I want to take it? Takes, takes, rook b8, and then. There's too much pressure on this. For example, queen d2, then I have bishop f6 here. Then I can just go rook b3, followed by like queen b6, queen b7. He has no way to defend. For example, knight e2, queen here, here or something. Okay, I guess here I can even take with the attack here. And I should be completely winning. Or not completely winning, but just completely equal. So that was a way to... And so, yeah, he shouldn't go knight d3. I think here his best move is queen b3 to prevent knight d3, but also to guard the rook on d1. And then after queen d6, takes, 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 takes. This position is plus 0 0.4. So objectively a draw. Maybe this would still be difficult to draw, to be honest. Like, it doesn't seem the easiest position in the world. But, yeah, I should just be picking up the b4 pawn at, at some point. And then, okay, my opponent's going to have to try to grind me, which, okay, he could have probably still grinded me. But, yeah, I should just definitely have very good chances of drawing. And that's if I found this critical move 95. But I did not see 95 and I went rook c8, which is okay, rook c8 looks natural getting the open file, but I really need to be active there. He went rook d1, queen e6. And yeah, queen e6 is another bad move. Apparently, rook d1 is a bad move because again, it allows 95 and now I'm threatening here. You might think, oh, isn't this a blunder because of here? But actually, I can just take it because it takes my rook c1 move, uh, starts looking very smart. Okay, but yeah, he doesn't have to take here. He should go h3. And the position is not so bad if you're here. 
uh, for example, queen e1, queen b7 attacking here, and knight g3 should be around equal again. So I again have another chance to equalize, but if you're wondering what he should have done, he should have gone for this move h3, and after knight e5, gone for queen b3 again. How is this different after queen e6? Ah, he shouldn't take anymore. He should just go queen b5. Okay, this is this is just very engine-like. I think rook d1 is very natural. So I went king king g7. And again, another terrible move. I'm not really sure why I didn't go rook c4 here. This should be at least pretty close to equalizing. And then, oh, not rook c1. Here I would have apparently rook c2. And if he takes, queen takes g4 here and here is a threat, I would win the game in this position. So, yeah, again, I had another chance. I played another lackadaisical move with king g7, and then he gets his knight out. And this is exactly what I just needed to not allow, is that his knight can get back into the game. And now, if his knight ever gets a d5, like, it's completely game over. So I still have to try. I went h4, threatening h4, sorry, h5, threatening h4, followed by takes here, rook e1, rook c2, activating the rook, knight f1. Yeah, at this point, it's too late. I really had to go here, not allowing the knight to uh, get in the game. And okay, my opponent went for uh, rook c2, uh, knight f1. Now I go rook c4, and that's too late because he has this move knight d2 defending. And yeah, at this point, I've actually just lost. And uh, from this point, my opponent played a very, very nice conversion. Rook d4, queen b6. All these moves are pretty much uh, top engine moves. Queen d4, very good move. Here, b4, very nice move. Knight d7 is a bad move. Here, I had a chance maybe with this move d5. And then after uh, rook a f e5, rook a4, rook b1, I had a small chance. Okay, but rook b1, knight e5, queen d1, takes takes, rook a7. And yeah, again, I maybe had a chance with g5 followed by, uh, oh, sorry, d5 followed by here, here, here. And d6, I have queen f6 attacking this. And for example, if he goes queen g3 to defend, then I have h4, queen h2. And okay, a move like queen h1 might be a pretty way, queen a1 might be a pretty way to actually win the game for me. But okay, alas, that's not going to happen. Instead, I defend it passively. And sorry about that. I think I just disconnected, but yeah, I just defended passively and I just did a bunch of nothing. And then eventually my opponent found some nice tactics and won the game. So I think there's a few lessons to be learned here. First off, I think I was way too pessimistic, especially uh, in this critical point of the game. Uh, for example, here, I honestly thought I was losing. If I had uh, seen this 95 move, I mean... Okay, it's a very good chance at least that I get a good position. I probably might I might still lose it, but okay, who knows what would happen if I play this 95 move. And then the next thing was this continual uh, blindness of e4, like not going queen c6 because you just don't see the pawns hang on e4. Like that's just pretty unacceptable. Like if a pawn if a pawn is on like in the center of the board and it's undefended, like your immediate instinct should be that uh, it's hanging. And the final like pretty big lapse was just not knowing the theory like immediately playing a bad move granted i got a good position anyways but okay that's beside the point i shouldn't have i should have been punished very severely and to be honest i was i think like my opponent had at least from the opening played perfect c5 is all perfect and then okay my opponent allowed me some chances with this move knight c3 but okay like i got very much punished out of the opening i just got lucky that i got some chances and then uh yeah the final lesson was like just don't give up like if i found this 95 move like Okay, I might still lose, but okay, I can put up a way, way better fight than I did. I pretty much just, uh, just lied down on the ground and did nothing while my opponent just beat me, which is just, just unacceptable. Like you should just have to fight, be able to fight all the way to the end, and that's maybe how you can save some draws from these lost positions, especially against these titled players. So okay, at least I went one and one with this guy, but okay, the classical game matters way more because it actually impacts the rating that matters. So. Yeah, my opponent ended up tying for the win for this tournament, so definitely a good performance by them, but hopefully next time if I ever play them again, I can give them a better game. So yeah, that's it in today's video, guys. If you liked the videos, please remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.